These were tough to sit through. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst acting performances of all time. For this list, we'll be going over the worst acting by individual performers in film. For the record, we're not saying we necessarily think these are the worst acting performances ever, but we understand why people do. Number 20. Sofia Coppola – The Godfather Part 3 The third time is not always the charm, as the final Godfather film is universally seen as a step down from its predecessors. What is this really for? Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? Although it has its share of flaws, one of the most glaring is the poor performance by Sofia Coppola as Mary Corleone. Tony says that I'm a front for the Foundation. That you're using me just to pull the strings. The daughter of the film's director, Coppola had no training as an actor and was a last-minute replacement when Winona Ryder dropped out. Her delivery jarred with the tone of the rest of the film, and has been an example of the dangers of nepotism for decades, even if her performance does have a few defenders. Dad? Why are you doing this to me? Thankfully, she made a better director than she did an actress. Only in America. That's it. Number 19, Dennis Hopper, Super Mario Brothers. King Koopa here. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like the Koopa special. Although a seasoned actor, Dennis Hopper's performance as the villainous Koopa in this video game adaptation is more over the top than the overgrown turtle his character is based on. Yoshi is a pet of the royal family. You may pet him. Just uh, don't move your hands around like a small wounded animal. Hopper plays Koopa with all the maniacal corporate evil of the worst snake, or in his case, dinosaur, in a suit crossed with Dr. Evil. Really? I am very disappointed in you, cousins. Fascist! Oppressor of the proletariat! Guy in charge! Granted, it would be hard for anyone to make the kind of lines Koopa says believable, but Hopper's delivery is just so strange and goofy that it can't be called good. Different. He's still entertaining, but not as intended. Are the Goombas training with the handheld de-evolution gun? Number 18, Steven Seagal, Half Past Dead. Steven Seagal doesn't exactly have a lot of range as an actor to begin with, and his usual stoic, whispery performance would actually be preferable to his lack of effort in this action flick. Yeah, I'm Russian. You got a problem with that? Seagal hurries through his lines, and despite the film nominally being a buddy movie, he has very little chemistry with co-star Ja Rule. Hey, Sa, Sa. You know you're crazy, right? Cuckoo crazy. Even Seagal's signature fight scenes feel unenthusiastic and tepid. It's a sad thing when a title like Half Past Dead can just as easily apply to the performance of the star of the movie. Yeah, what am I doing here? Earning your trust, maintaining my cover. You ain't screwed that up. Number 17, Megan Fox, Transformers Franchise. The Transformers franchise has gained a reputation for having shallow female characters who are only cast for their appearance and not their acting ability, which began with Megan Fox. Oh god, I can't even tell you how much I'm not your little bunny. The actress takes what is, on paper, a fairly interesting character and drains her of much personality. If I could take it all apart, clean it, put it back together. That's weird, I just wouldn't peg you for mechanical. Well, you know, I don't really broadcast it. Guys don't like it when you know more about cars than they do. Even with the notorious director Michael Bay framing her on screen like a sex object, Fox herself has copped to acting poorly in the movies. And we can see how being new to film and working under a director like Bay would lead to a bad performance. You think I'm shallow? Huh? You think you're shallow? No, 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 no. I think, um, I think there's a lot more than meets the eye with you. Okay. Number 16, Kirk Cameron, Saving Christmas. Christian movies aren't exactly known for their stellar acting. They're more echo chambers for beliefs than actual entertainment. I think to myself, this cannot be what God wants. Such is the case with its outspoken star, Kirk Cameron. Nope, not here. Cameron's acting here makes the actors in local commercials or pornography look masterful by comparison. You, 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 you drank the Kool-Aid. You, you, you took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. You swallowed the whole thing. His stilted delivery earned him a well-deserved Golden Raspberry Award, and he proved in good company, since many other aspects of the critically derided film won some as well. 
He can put the blame on an atheist conspiracy all he wants. The fact is, he just sucks here. Are we seeing the same everything that's going on in there? <laughs> yeah. Number 15, Johnny Depp, Mordecai. For the last several decades, Johnny Depp has gradually turned from one of the most versatile actors in film to a complete caricature of himself. I am Lord Charlie Mordecai, and this little bit of magic is my mustache. The peak, or valley, of this is arguably his role as the eponymous character of Mordecai. But I was hopeful my new mustache would cheer her up. Depp's by now usual, relentlessly quirky shtick is up to 11 in this movie, with his every action and expression exaggerated and served with a full course of ham. I had no idea I was so deep in Her Majesty's hole. If anyone had actually seen this movie besides us, unfortunately, this might have been a career ender for the actor. Oh God, it's unbearable. You will get used to it, I promise. Why should I have to? I'm invested in it. Number 14, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Batman and Robin. I saw this coming, did you? Very few of the actors involved in this infamously campy superhero film come off well, but Arnold Schwarzenegger's terrible performance stands out, even among the dross of Batman and Robin. Mercy? I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. <laughs> Schwarzenegger hams it up to the extreme, delivering his terrible, ice pun laden dialogue with the kind of manic glee you only see in an actor who knows his part is terrible, but is gonna have as much fun as he can with what he has. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! And while we wouldn't recommend watching him if you hate puns, let's kick some ice. Schwarzenegger is still surprisingly entertaining in such an awful role. First. Gotham, and then the world! Number 13, Halle Berry, Catwoman. Halle Berry is a very talented actress, but talent will only get you so far in some cases. I mean, George Hedare isn't the nicest guy in the world, you know? He fired me. <laughs> As the lead in another reviled superhero film, Berry helps set the tone of the movie at incomprehensible, with her interpretation of the title superheroine ranging from cartoonishly meek to needlessly sexual, to the just plain bizarre. What even is that basketball scene? Granted, there's plenty to criticize about Catwoman, but Barry is at the forefront of it all. At least she was a good sport and accepted her Razzie in person. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Number 12, Madonna, swept away. Madonna has proven herself to be a great actress, most notably in her Golden Globe winning turn as Ava Peron in Evita. On the other hand, she's been nominated for 16 Golden Raspberry Awards, the gold standard for movie awfulness. You are so gonna regret this. For Swept Away, she received the Razzie for Worst Actress and shared Worst Screen Couple with Adriano Giannini. Please, madame. What's the matter, don't you wanna dance with me? I don't want to dance with people I don't like. Madonna had a lot working against her. Swept Away was a remake of a critically acclaimed 1974 film, her spoiled brat rich girl character wasn't easily likable, and it was a high profile collaboration with her then director slash hubby, Guy Ritchie. Oh, and Peepee, -pee, I want it cold. Understand? Not cool, cold. But her performance, like the film, is arguably her worst. Are we being punished because we're rich? Is that the problem? No, no, my love. Number 11, Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan, the 50 Shades franchise. This entry isn't going to be just one actor, but two, because the leads of all three movies are Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan. Seriously? Yes. Though each film has made hundreds of millions in box office receipts, each film has also received biting reviews, with many criticizing Johnson and Dornan's lack of chemistry. What happened to learning to walk before we run? Well, that's just one of the many things that we can talk about over breakfast. While the actors admittedly had poor source material to work with, considering the screenplays were based on novels spun off of Twilight fan fiction, it's not like Hollywood couldn't have taken liberties to improve the dialogue. With Christian Grey coming off as a total creeper, and Anastasia Steele decidedly one note, is it any wonder both Dornan and Johnson won Worst Actor and Worst Actress Razzies for their roles? Well, some of us like to get it right the first time, bro. Number 10, Jaden Smith, After Earth. Nepotism rears its head again. 
Jaden Smith plays Kitai, a boy who becomes stranded on a post-apocalyptic Earth with his father, played by his real-life dad Will Smith, after their ship crashes. Jaden lacks his father's formidable charisma, though, and following him as the film's lead is rough, given his stilted, overacted, unnatural performance. Dad, please come help me. I can't see. <laughs> I can't do this by myself, bad. Please go get me. Will Smith has worked with the son before in other films, but their chemistry here is non existent. No, Dad. We, I can do it. And while that's not entirely Jaden's fault, the elder Smith's uncharacteristically wooden performance creates a jarring contrast. I take full responsibility. You did your best. You have nothing more to prove. We can't say that his acting is very good. What was I supposed to do? What did you want me to do? Number 9. Mike Myers, The Love Guru Sometimes a performance is a career killer. Exhibit A, Mike Myers in The Love Guru. Let's make like a baby and head out. His portrayal of Pitka, the world's number two guru, received the exact opposite reaction of his universally loved Austin Powers character. Maybe it's the stereotype-heavy portrayal of Hinduism. Maybe it's the barrage of little-person jokes heaped on Vern Troyer's character that totally fall flat. Well, how do you do? Shrimp? What'd you call me, Jagamo? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your gnome. Name! Maybe it's the distracting asides that don't ever seem to produce laughs. It's hard to gauge how badly audiences disliked Mike Myers' performance, but one thing's for certain. Studios haven't been knocking each other out of the way to star Myers in a live-action film. What does Deepak Chopra have that I don't have? Number 8. Kristen Stewart, Twilight Kristen Stewart as Bella Swan in Twilight is an anomaly. It's a star-making turn in a film that received mixed reviews and the first of a franchise that raked in more than $3 billion. On top of that, she received MTV's Best Female Performance Award. So why are there so many haters? We're guessing it's in part the cumulative effect of her pouty, sigh-filled, eye-fluttering, lip-biting, looking around for inspiration portrayal of Swan over five films, for three of which she received Razzie nods. So what, you? You read minds. Since the Twilight series, Stewart has proven to be an excellent actress. For Clouds of Sils Maria, she became the first American actress to win a César, France's highest acting honor. I'm gonna work it out when we get it tonight. It's, it's gonna be really different. Number seven, Taylor Lautner, Abduction. In 2011, Lautner had reached heartthrob status playing Jacob in the Twilight films, when along came Abduction, a John Singleton-directed action thriller. The film features Lautner's star turn as Nathan Harper, a young man who might not be who he thinks he is. So why didn't this profitable film produce any big-budget, leading-man opportunities for Lautner? I don't know. I just thought summer was summer. Perhaps because his performance could be described as one note, and that one note is a vacant-eyed stare. And in a scene where Nathan's parents are killed, watching Lautner struggle to wrangle up tears is painful. In his review of Abduction, New York Post critic Kyle Smith compared Lautner's acting chops to Burt from Sesame Street. You know what's messed up? I never knew either one of my mothers. And it's kind of hard to disagree. Why? Do you not trust me? Number 6. Jennifer Lopez, Gili. We're filing this performance's inclusion under collateral damage. Sure, it wasn't JLo's finest hour, but Gigli was an all-time stinker, topping WatchMojo's 2013 list of the worst movies of all time. Of course, part of the reason it's so bad is her performance. You know, this may be a good time to suggest that you not allow the seeds of cruel hope to sprout in your soul. I don't know what that means, but it sounds beautiful. Lopez seemingly sleepwalks through the film, showing very little acting range. You want to cloud your adversary's ability to reason, thus gaining the upper hand yourself. In the end, Jayla received a Razzie for Worst Actress, and she gave us a squirm-inducing seduction scene with a line so bad it may have ruined Thanksgiving. It's turkey time. Huh? Gobble, gobble. Ew. Number 5. Hayden Christensen, Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. When Star Wars fans envisioned a young Anakin Skywalker, they probably didn't expect a spoiled, whiny, rat-tail-wearing brat with no skills in the art of seduction. Maybe the creator's fundamentally flawed conception of Anakin explains why Christensen is held in such contempt. They're like animals. And I slaughtered them like animals. 
I hate them. Part of the problem is Christensen's clunky, flat, unconvincing performance. And when paired with pros like Ewan McGregor and future Oscar winner Natalie Portman, the disparity in acting skills is crystal clear. You are in my very soul, tormenting me. But is it the worst performance in Attack of the Clones, or is Jar Jar Binks just lucky to be a CGI creation? Number 4. John Travolta, Battlefield Earth With WatchMojo's 2016 list naming Battlefield Earth the worst movie of all time, you knew someone in the cast was taking the bullet for bad acting. And that person is John Travolta. I'm a little pressed for time. Why don't you save the going away jokes for later? No more jokes, sir, I swear. Based on Scientologist L. Ron Hubbard's 1982 novel, Travolta plays Terrell, a giant humanoid alien in the year 3000 who's stuck on a wasteland called Earth. Travolta's performance has been called hammy, weird, over the top, and just plain awful. There must be some mistake. The most scathing review may have come from Washington Post's Rita Kempley, who calls Travolta's acting god-awful and describes him as prancing around like a peacock at an egg roll. Ouch. Never underestimate what a little leverage can do, rat brain. Number 3. Tommy Wiseau, The Room You know what they say, love is blind. Few performances can equal the unparalleled badness of Tommy Wiseau's lead role as Johnny in The Room. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. The European actor, writer, director of this Z-grade cult classic plays a man betrayed by his fiancée, sorry, future wife, and his best friend. Yet despite their betrayal, Wiseau's acting swings wildly between monotone disinterest and vague amusement. Chicken, Peter, you just a little chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. Every one of his choices as an actor is so strange, so inappropriate for the situation, that people have theorized that Wiseo is acting badly on purpose. <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? Or that he's an alien. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. But as wrong and as inexplicable as his performance is, it remains incredibly watchable and has to be seen to be believed. It'll tear you apart. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Number 2. Nicolas Cage, The Wicker Man In 2015, WatchMojo named Nicolas Cage the number one amazing overacting actor. Cage's frenetic, eccentric, over-the-top style can be electric, like his Oscar-winning turn as an alcoholic screenwriter in Leaving Las Vegas. What do you say we finish these? And we go back to my apartment on the beach. We're torn when it comes to his performance as Edward Mollis in Wicker Man. It was number two on Watch Mojo's list of Oscar winners who sucked in other movies, but it was number one in Best Freakouts in Movies. This is murder! Murder! You'll all be guilty! And you're doing it for nothing! Killing me won't bring back your goddamn honey! So all that's left to do is pay homage to one of Cage's most memorable performances and ask if a bunch of crazy women make you wear an enclosed bee helmet when you're allergic to bees, wouldn't your reaction sort of be like Cage's? We think so. What is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I'm losing my eyes! You know what's funny about this list? A lot of people on it are good, proven actors. I mean, not everyone. <clears throat> Tommy Wiseau. <clears throat> but a lot of them. That's probably what makes it so disappointing when they turn in half-assed work. Well, before we get to our top pick, let's check out some honorable, or I guess they'd be dishonorable, mentions. It's Max's GPS. It's moving. What? How? No idea. Should we follow it? <laughs> get it. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wanna make some music? What, are you kidding me? Great. <laughs> I'll uh, leave you two alone. Well, Bye, here. Jack. Come here, come here. I mean, why don't I do something for me for once, you know? I want to stay. I'm gonna stay. You. What have you done with Sherlock? Yeah. Why, Watson? I never left. Amazing. Yes, I know. Yes, you've outdone yourself this time. Jake Chambers. Now kill each other. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, Adam Sandler, Jack and Jill. Stop us if you've heard this one before. Adam Sandler gives a horrible performance in a misguided, crass, unfunny comedy. But what sets Jack and Jill apart from the canon of crappy Sandler roles? 
This film gives us not one, but two awful Sandler performances. Are you going bald? Huh? No, 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 you're getting fatter, and your hair doesn't realize it needs to cover more face. Okay. So bad, Sandler earned Razzies for Worst Actor and Worst Actress. Sandler's Jack is nothing new, a somewhat goofy, uncomfortable man-child with percolating anger. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, however, is something else. Sandler's screechy-voiced twin sister is whiny, needy, and totally annoying, and his portrayal of a woman is even less convincing than Tyler Perry's Medea. Maybe uh, God wouldn't have given you a rat face if you believed in him. I don't have a rat face. Yes, you do have a rat face. It's scary. Can Jack and Jill go up the hill and never come back? Hey, Jill, can I talk to you for a second? No! My bag to pack in is nothing left to... <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.